Welcome to the Frist Art Museum. We are in the galleries now with the exhibition J.M.W. Turner, Quest for the Sublime. This is a wonderful exhibition. We would love for you to be here in person, but in lieu of that, I am going to walk you through and we're going to take a look at some of these masterworks, not necessarily through the eyes of an art historian, but imagining ourselves as if we are within the mind of the painter himself. So when we talk about the ocean, the impact of the ocean on the human imagination, we oftentimes describe moods, the moods of the ocean, and the, compare the moods of the ocean to the moods of the individual. You know, whether it's a, say, you know, a stormy relationship, you know, tumultuous uh, 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 storm at sea. You know, all of these things correlate between the inside of the individual and the forces of the universe. Um, so the sea was a really powerful subject matter for the Romantics. Another powerful subject matter for the Romantics was the mountains. The mountains were lofty, they were ascendant, they were majestic, they were beautiful, every bit as beautiful as the sea, but they were also dangerous and they were terrifying. And so that sense of mixing the, the visual pleasure of looking at something extraordinary, something that ascended into the heavens in a way that might remind you of a higher power, but also at the same time knowing that if you went into the mountains, you might not come out again because they're very, very dangerous uh, places. And so that, again, that, that frisson of, of fear that you might feel when you actually went into the mountains was something that really attracted and appealed to the romantics like Turner. Um, so as a young man, of course, he wanted to paint mountains. The mountains wouldn't come to him in London, so he had to go find the mountains. But he couldn't go to Europe because at the time the Napoleonic Wars were in effect and so he really, so travel was impossible to go to France or to go to the Alps. So what he had to do was to travel around the UK, travel around England, uh, Wales, Scotland, and look for the mountains there that he could paint. So this is one of his earliest mountain scenes here, Morning Among the Coniston Fells. And it's a view in the north part of England, in the lake country of England. Really a beautiful area extraordinarily rich and uh, an area that in invited Wordsworth and Coleridge and all the great poets of the Romantic period to go and escape from the cities, to go and contemplate the larger, the larger issues of life. And so Turner followed suit and he painted this beautiful mountain in a way that kind of amplifies the height of the mountain. He makes it seem a little bit more impressive maybe than it really is in real life. And if you look at the painting, you see these mists kind of pouring over, over the, uh, the distant hills. You see sheep running down toward a gully. It's all motion. It's all ephemeral. It's all atmosphere. Sometimes when we think of mountains, we think that they're stable. But Turner painted them almost as if they're liquid is if they're always in a, in a condition of motion. And that was something that, that he did throughout his life, that idea of painting one element as if it's another element and transforming it all into the liquidity of paint itself. So it's really a beautiful work. It's compelling. He painted it when he was relatively young. He painted it before he had a chance to go to Switzerland, to go to see the Alps for the first time. And as we look at some of the works that he did in Switzerland, we'll see a noticeable difference. The mountains are as majestic in real life as he made this painting of the, North, uh, the Northern England mountain, uh, English mountain. Um, but there's also a sense of, of precision in the topography because he's right in the middle of it. He immersed himself in it. So it's not necessarily a work of the imagination anymore. It's a work of documentation. It's capturing the actual moment of being in the mountains.